Hi, my name is John Crossno with ASG Technologies, and we're going to talk about mainframe performance and capacity planning and in relation to DevOps. IT departments face several challenges today, many of which are related to performance and capacity. A couple indications that you aren't getting the data that you need for proper provisioning could be that you're faced with unplanned CapEx, or perhaps you're not getting the right data, and that's causing under or over provisioning. To properly provision isn't only about getting data, but it needs to be the right data, and you need to be able to relate it back to the business. Is one line of business growing exponentially more than another or in different ways? Lacking the ability to identify and quickly respond to hotspots can also be a good indication that some data is lacking. If that's the case, then you're also lacking historical data. Long-term perspectives can provide more stable trend information. Not having that right data can easily lead organizations to be in constant firefighting mode. How important is it for you to be proactive? Are you not having the firefighting issues? Great, you're probably collecting the right data to be proactive. But how much time and effort goes into that collection of data? Are you spending too much time in multiple dissimilar and not integrated tools or need data in different formats? Is this causing issues in other ways, like not having enough time for other tasks? To focus in on these a little, when we talk to customers about their performance and capacity challenges, they often point to these in particular. IT leaders spend a lot of time and energy managing and trying to reduce IT costs that negatively impact budgets and revenue generating projects. They struggle to identify necessary infrastructure adjustments that reduce costs and increase utilization and flexibility as their IT environments grow and become more complex. They don't have an easy way to model or forecast future capacity needs as volumes increase. New mission critical applications emerge and hardware platforms advance. <clears throat> it's difficult to identify and prevent unplanned system and application outages that are that are a massive cost to the business. They can't obtain a complete view of performance bottlenecks and issues across mainframe, distributed, and cloud systems, which makes it harder to reduce the mean time to repair of bottlenecks and issues impeding business critical value streams. On top of these challenges, they're often using multiple products that are not well integrated and aren't easy to train newer staff on, especially next-gen IT professionals who have little to no mainframe experience. This leads to a higher total cost of ownership. Improving performance and capacity monitoring with easy-to-use tools that offer modern interfaces and automation is essential for our customers to overcome these challenges and prevent them from becoming larger issues that impact not only other areas of IT, but also the business and your customers. Recent studies and surveys continue to show that the mainframe ecosphere is alive and doing well, contradicting many pundits who probably don't understand the environment and the value. Cost is still on the minds of business leaders, but its inclusion into a hybrid environment and total cost of ownership is factored in might help explain why it's only 52% of those surveyed that make it their highest priority. Managing the health of the systems becomes even more important when you consider that the environment is growing, while at the same time, the number of people with 20 plus years of experience is decreasing. This further drives the need for better and more integrated tools that look holistically across the silos and from a business value stream perspective to more quickly determine where the issues are that are causing performance degradation. Those without the years of experience are being asked to do more and often, so anything that helps them reduce the mean time to resolution is critical. Looking beyond that is a need to use analytics to give an earlier warning or prediction that a problem is coming. 
and then provide meaningful and actionable information to help prevent it. The core values for tools used to manage a system's health, should, um, they should, what they should offer are the ability to improve system and application availability through effective performance management and monitoring, proactively identify issues by getting problem notifications, reduce mean time to repair across their systems with views of what's happening in the system and the ability to drill into problem areas. Monitor, analyze, and report on performance across system hardware and software with one set of products. Provide a common look and feel and allow the user to easily switch between environments. And lower their total cost of ownership with easy installation, maintenance, and transferable skills. At the end of the day, health is about the ability of a system to get work done. Let's think about that for a moment. So much focus is given to applications that often the overall impact to the systems isn't considered or considered as heavily. While it's important to tune applications and to test the performance of an application, the health of the systems that the application is running on is just as important. When an application is having issues, if the system itself is heavy, is healthy, the impact to other applications is likely minimized. Is this true 100% of the time? Of course not. That might come down to a specific resource issue. But generally speaking, a healthy system will continue to allow work to happen. So maintaining a healthy system through monitoring of KPIs and proper man capacity management is equally important. It's not just the view of what a single program or application is doing, but about workload throughput. But watching all of the data isn't feasible you need to have key performance indicators that indicate what's really happening. By looking at indicators when thresholds are breached reduces false positives from looking at data incorrectly and getting alerts from those breached thresholds can help prevent service interruptions when they are acted upon in a timely manner. Preventing service disruptions leads to healthier systems with more nines of availability. This isn't just about mainframe systems either. Today's applications use technologies that span systems. The health of all of those systems matter to the performance of the application. Finding an issue becomes much more difficult. In order to measure your system's health, you need to collect key performance indicators, not just from the mainframe or an aspect of the mainframe, but across all of the technology silos. Business applications today do not live completely in just one environment. A performance indicator or key performance indicator is a type of performance measurement. KPIs evaluate the success of an organization or of a particular activity in which it engages. Often success is simply the repeated periodic achievement of some low levels of operational goal. And sometimes success is defined in terms of making progress towards strategic goals. Baselines profile normal workload behaviors and are fed by KPIs. A baseline defines the normal behavior for a resource. Static baselines capture point in time and are determined by historical records. However, static baselines become stale over time. Dynamic baselines are time limited and use recent input, which allows the baseline to be updated continuously. Behaviors change over time. So should the baselines that current behaviors are based on. Anomalies are outliers, a deviation from expected behaviors. An evaluation to determine anomalous behavior would involve a KPI metric compared to baseline value, for example. Anomalies involve historical data when they are based on dynamic or static baselines. You can, of course, set a static threshold to base an anomaly on as well. They will give you a glimpse into work health and provide a way to look for hotspots, trends, etc. They're also an indicator of missed service level agreements and can identify or separate real concerns from background noise. It's important to visualize health to identify areas that need attention. 
That can be reports, dashboards, other such things. The roles that mostly benefit from this are diagnosticians, someone performing an analysis, and the business entity owner. The anomaly lists of aberrant behavior include charts, which can be comprised of heat maps, line charts, histograms, multidimensional visuals, bubble charts, etc. They could be organized by health dimension, business entity, platform, and other such things. This is an example of what a visualization might look like. In this example, we see a number of anomalies that have occurred in a specific time range and broken down into the business value stream and by resource type. This allows you to focus in on those business value streams or those lines of business that are important to you. To take action and correct issues with a system's health can involve a number of things. Comparing anomalies to the broader system. Remember that health is about the system getting work done. Are the anomaly thresholds too stringent or even too lax? If they're based on static baselines from the same period a week, month, or a quarter ago, have situations evolved such that they aren't as valid? You might also need to compare a current situation against a dynamic baseline, one that evolves as your system continues to evolve. Predictive analytics will take the anomaly data and look for patterns and provide actionable information and actions to take before things get out of control. In some cases, maybe those actions can happen autonomously. In any case, notifying you that things may be going sideways before it actually happens can help maintain the integrity and health of the system. Based on the historical or baseline data and using that to compare with the current situation can also be a good indication of whether to move workloads or rebalance them. In some cases, it might be as simple as adding additional resources to get through some spike that's occurring. Many aspects tied to monitoring system health also tie right back into capacity management. While much of the RAS comes from the hardware, OS, and subsystems, capacity management is needed to help maintain various aspects of RAS. The data that is collected through the monitoring activities is needed as input for capacity management. The cost of the investment in hardware, facilities, and software makes the need for proper provisioning that much more important. In an ideal scenario, the metrics collected through monitoring for performance management should be integrated with a capacity management tool. The two go hand in hand. An integrated capacity management tool can use the historical metrics collected through managing the health of the system to look at real trends. When performance management is used earlier in the development process, those metrics can help with the necessary planning for when those applications are delivered to production to ensure a smoother deployment. Normally, the first thought around capacity planning is to ensure sufficient resources are available to achieve the expected performance characteristics of the applications. Because the costs associated with various software products also deployed there, you want to ensure that you have enough capacity to limit the number of times that capacity upgrades are required. You'd also ensure that you haven't over-provisioned the environment cause an extra cost for things like hardware that sit idle too often. It's a balancing act, and it requires the right integrated metrics. Having many different tools, or each group or silo using their own tools, can be a nightmare for groups needing to perform the same general function across the numerous silos involved. Having one suite of tools that can do monitoring, analysis, planning, and reporting for an entire enterprise reduces time and effort and allows for shared knowledge across the silos and reduces overall ownership costs. This also enables those new to the roles, likely without the depth of experience of their predecessors, 
the more quickly pick up the roles and allows everyone to do more. In a typical DevOps cycle, testing is done as part of the build process. Ideally, it's automated. Following successful testing, the changes are deployed. More recently, and expanding on that testing is a need to monitor the application itself for performance degradations before the changes get into production. This isn't to say that every changed program has to be monitored this way, but when there are issues, that ability is being brought forward or shifted left. Just as important is the need to monitor the changes from a system perspective to shorten performance testing cycles and the performance feedback loop between dev and ops. Here we aren't talking about the individual application changes, but for integration level testing and when performance and scalability testing is performed. This supports an accelerated shift to site reliability engineering on the operation side. When ops has a better idea of potential impacts to the production environment, they can better plan and tune for those changes. Additionally, the data collected can assist with more accurate capacity planning to accommodate the ever-changing needs of the applications. It is important to build up healthy habits to managing the performance of your systems and maintain those habits. Monitoring the performance is a critical first step, but if you're not going to do something with the data you're able to collect, why measure and collect it? The baselines you establish need to be kept current. If they are static, then it's even more important to move the line that they're based on. There is nothing worse than stale data. As individual lines of business have their own value streams and requirements, it's important to monitor based on those business entities. Not all are the same. As you look at capacity management and planning, look at the trends based on the data you've collected over time. This also goes right back to the baselines and how important it is not to continue using stale data. Remember that health is the ability of a system to get work done. Health isn't just about performance management, but incorporates capacity management as well. It all goes hand in hand. Workload throughput is the key. If your workload isn't going through, you are and will continue to have problems. Monitor the KPIs, up them as business needs require. Make sure the data the thresholds are based on isn't stale. Use everything in your toolbox to prevent service interruptions and ensure 24 seven system availability across all of the technology stacks that the applications rely on. Use your performance management tools earlier in the development cycle. The earlier you see where something is going to have an impact on the system, the better you're able to manage it. Thank you for your time.